Hey guys, so in this video I want to show you some of the improvements that I've made to the one wheel firmware. The highlights are the smoother, softer stopping and then the uh, improved tilt back. I'd like to try one more time to explain how torque tilt back works. And I'm sorry, I have to go back to this basic diagram and I know most of you guys know how this works, but bear with me. So. When the board is level, it is essentially neutral. You don't accelerate, you don't slow down. When the board gets pushed down, you accelerate. When the nose gets pulled up, then you brake or accelerate in the other direction. So essentially, it is like a gas pedal and brake pedal in one. Now, take that same board onto a hill and if you assume we didn't have a torque tilt back, like a lot of people claim, your neutral position looks like this now. And what happened to your gas pedal? You got a lot less room to travel, meaning that you can only push down a tiny little bit. Anybody with a Pint or XR set to Pacific or Mission Mode knows that especially the first inch of travel doesn't really cause any hard acceleration. You have to push the board down further to really accelerate. It's kind of a progressive feel. So in the beginning, it's really soft, and then it gets harder as you get to the bottom. And that's going to be important later on. So now we're taking the same board to the hill. Now all you have left in your gas pedal is the first inch. The first inch that, remember, doesn't really do much in terms of acceleration. So any steep hill, you would not even be able to crawl up that hill with the first inch of travel because you wouldn't be able to overcome gravity. So how it really works is your Pint and XR, they adjust the neutral position. And in the VESC firmware, we call that the set point. So that higher neutral position now allows you to accelerate more. And by the time you keep your board level, it is already in a territory where it causes significant acceleration. And that is what allows people to go up a hill with a level board. And the notion that bringing the board up from that perfectly level would start breaking, that is nonsense in my opinion, because if you look at a picture like this, um, this is taken from a Jimmy Chang video. I have put the link in the description below. You can see the rider is going up a steep hill. His nose is clearly pointed upwards. And I don't think that anybody would believe that he's braking right now. If you've ever gone up a steep hill on a mountain bike, what do you do to slow down? Do you hit your brakes? No, you just stop pedaling and you'll be stopped in a second. So that's the same thing here. He is not braking. He just is accelerating less for a second because, well, he doesn't want to hit his nose on the ground. But if the one wheel really engaged the brakes right now, he would come to a stop instantly and start going downhill. And according to the commentary in the video, he is not in elevated mode. So hopefully this settles the debate. The Pint NXR definitely are doing torque tilt back and the name is probably poorly chosen. So we'll find something else. What did I call it? The, oh yeah, the intelligent torque response, which is what I want to call it, because somehow torque tilt back makes people think of tilt back and oh no, I don't like tilt back, but this is really a good thing. And the Pint and XR is doing it all the time. Every time you're having the most fun, it's doing that. So we're going to call it intelligent torque response from now on and uh, let me show you how it works so first this board tune is really soft All right, so this is mimicking kind of a pacific pacific tune and uh, so when i accelerate the board goes really far down and same when i brake i can bring it really far down in the back oh that was the effect of the imu not being well calibrated so now obviously we have the 
cool quick stop feature which I will try to show off. Let's see if I need to be a little faster here. And boom! So that works pretty well. And you can see I have no problem leaning back. Now my son says with his 85 pounds he does have trouble getting the board all the way down. So that is still something we got to tune. I haven't covered that yet. I believe I need to do uh, um, asymmetric PIDs, basically braking behavior being softer than acceleration behavior. But um, here is essentially how soft this board looks. So now let's go into some grass and some hills. So now with those same soft settings, I'm going to go right up this hill. And you can see my nose stays perfectly level, yet my board still remains soft and responsive. So that is essentially the key to being able to go uphill and still be able to accelerate and have your full range almost of uh, acceleration obviously limited by your battery or whatever but this is it essentially all right so we're going to go through this grass my battery is pretty low but it should just work so i'm transitioning and boom i don't even feel it whoa i'm losing my balance <laughs> let's try this again with the grass i'm just going to go right through and hopefully this time I'm not going to lose my balance. Nice. Whoa! Here we got Torque Tilt Back Plus. Go and transition into the grass. Look at that. No shift. No shift and tilt. And go back down. Very cool. And now let's show them a quick stop. I don't feel safe with that yet. <laughs> that was it though. Alright, now just go go fast and then do a hard break and don't get off the board. No longer shoot well, does it shoot back? Oh, no. Test out. Try to just come to a complete stop. It goes backwards a little bit, yeah, but it but doesn't no, shoot it you back. It didn't. It took longer to shoot. It took, it took me longer to make it to go back while I'm riding this grass. Exactly. You want to ride this grass, boy? So get in the grass. Let's go. Oh, oh we got three D prints. Those um things for jumps, like that hold in your feet. So right here, it's the torque tilt back that keeps the board level. So this pretty much sums up the new features in the tool. I hope uh, this all made sense. And if you're wondering when can I try this out, I don't think that this is going to be in the beta anytime soon. I don't know how this will go. The code that I created is not really meant for being upstreamed into the main VESC code base just because it's not super clean and honestly it's not very well engineered. I basically just wanted to see for myself what needed to be done. I am not necessarily the guy that is uh, qualified to create the proper control algorithms. So a lot of what, I, what I've done can be done better probably. But I think this is a good step forward to show the way and hopefully somebody with some control systems experience can uh, implement this properly. So uh, my code is on GitHub. You can uh, try it out, look at it yourself. Um, and hopefully, and hopefully this will turn into something great really soon. Now on to the boring part. For those of you who want to know how it works, I'll explain each feature a little bit. The first feature is the easiest, it's quick stop. And all we do is we stop the one wheel when the board is tilted 15 degrees or more, your front foot is completely released and your speed is less than one mile an hour. 
The next feature is the forgiving emergency braking. The basic idea is that when you're slower than two miles an hour, we gradually reduce the integral component. So the result is that at zero speed, I effectively becomes zero, and now only P causes the initial acceleration. And that's what gives it a soft feel near zero speed. So if you do a hard brake, if you brake from high speed and you come down to a near stop or to a full stop, essentially, and you stay on your board, the board will no longer shoot backwards because it's accelerating back. So now on to the main feature, the improved torque tilt back. Why does it need improving? Well, currently it's triggered by amps only. Also, the name is contentious, so the new name that I came up with is adaptive torque response. First I used intelligent torque response, but then uh, overnight I changed my mind. So it's going to be adaptive torque response. So what were the problems with the initial torque tilt back implementation? Because it was only looking at amps and high amps are also caused by acceleration and braking, um, it would make the board very stiff because it kept kicking in when you're accelerating and braking. And if you set the start amps so high that you didn't get that effect, then it also would only kick in on this very steepest of hills. So we want it to only trigger in grass, hills, etc. And then also we'd like it to work independent of rider weight if possible. And we know it must be possible because the Pint NXR can make it happen too. So how do we improve it? And here the key problem that I, I have to figure out is how do I use the available data to make the right decision? So I looked at a ton of graphs. I, uh, I added a bunch of extra data to the logging. And um, I came to the conclusion that we have to look at acceleration. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but by considering the actual acceleration before triggering a torque response, we are able to distinguish the two. So here my magic formula, I call it torque efficiency, is you take the measured acceleration and you divide it by motor current. That gives you your torque efficiency. And now if the torque efficiency is greater than one, that means you're actually accelerating, you're putting in amps, but you're also getting acceleration in return. So no torque response is needed. If, on the other hand, your torque efficiency is less than one, that's an indicator that your board is struggling. That's when we want to adjust the set point. So it means that you're putting in a lot of amps, but you're not getting faster or not getting faster at the rate you would expect. That ratio of acceleration to motor current is what I now use as the criteria for when do I assume it's just pure acceleration and brake or braking? And when do I assume that it is a situation where the board needs extra help? So that is it. Now, one last feature I want to point out is auto suspend. And that feature addresses the issue of battery drain when you forget to turn off your one wheel. Because the balance app has a brake current set when the board is not being ridden, that brake current draws some pretty serious amps, which when left on long enough can put your battery into a dangerous state, but because it will never turn off. So um, I figured there's no reason to stay in the brake mode for more than a few minutes. And um, so I automatically switch from balance to UART, which is temporary. If you just power cycle your board, it'll be back in the balance app. And uh, you can control it with the drop down shutdown mode, which you find in the general app settings. And this now ensures that your board will not stay in a power hungry break mode for more than a few minutes. Uh, whatever you configure there. And um, if you have a beeper connected to your servo pins or the uh, extra Fokker pins, then there will be a triple beep that um, you will hear 
right before it switches over. So this works really great. I've used it many times already, so I can highly recommend turning that on. And uh, yeah, that sums up the features. So uh, what is next? I still think that the adaptive torque response can be tuned further. Um, I have literally just discovered it a few days ago, uh, right before I got the pint. So I think that can still be improved. Then uh, the asymmetric PIDs, I believe that that's the key for enabling a softer braking feel while still preserving acceleration. And who knows, there might be other things that we can think of. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring and uh, see you guys next time.